All right, people, what is going on? What is going on? Episode number 298. My goodness, we're just that quick. We're jumping up on 300 uh, episodes that fast. That, man, that is crazy. Episode 298 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. How you guys are doing? Uh, hopefully you're having a great Thursday. Hopefully everything is going well. I've been just constantly churning out content for not only this channel, but the other channel. So if you are interested in that other channel, that is the VF cast. Just type that in. I'll pop right on up. That's my secondary YouTube channel. But enough of all that. Let's get into this topic that we have today. I want to talk about the win loss record expectations for Georgia Southern football for the year 2022. So we're basically going to be piggybacking off the last episode when I talked about the football schedule and it's very early. So we're not saying who's, you know, what games are going to be won and which one's going to be lost. But I really want to ask you guys, what are your expectations for this team at this point? Since you know, the actual schedule now, what do you think? What, I mean, what do you expect from this team? So we're going to get into all that and everything under the umbrella. Uh, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully you will enjoy this episode and other episodes to come. Maybe you will take time to go and listen to some of the other stuff if you're interested. Welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show for the new people. This, I am VF Baller, and over here we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. I was kind of surprised that we're jumping on 300 episodes already. You can find me on YouTube or Rumble, and if you want to listen to the podcast, it's on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. So you can have very av many avenues to listen to the podcast. If you want to go ahead and hit that like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel, share this podcast, subscribe to the podcast avenue of your choice. I also recommend you to hit auto download if it's available. Auto download, that means once I put the, po the podcast up, it'll download straight to your device and you can listen whenever you're ready. And uh, also, Last but not least, if you want to, you could uh, look in the description box of all of these um, podcast uh, avenue or the video avenue, and you can donate if you feel like you want to uh, continue to your extra support. Also, I have a Patreon where we uh, also um, do an extra episode every weekend where um, starting this weekend, I'm going to be having an extra episode on deck for you guys where we talk about more things in the sports uh, world. So we'll get into all that. Now, let's go ahead and get into this, though. When lost record expectations for Georgia Southern football, what are your thoughts? What are your opinions about this? I'm already on record. If you follow me on Twitter, which is at VF Baller, you already know that I won an eight and four season, nothing less. I know some people say six and six. I think that's a little low, especially with the talent that we already have. And I think we have a better vision to where we have better, um, you know, we have better opportunity to put our talent in place to be successful. I'll just say that much. So with that being said, I feel that we could at least turn this around and win five more games that we did last year. I think there's no question of that. So um, I think uh, realistically, realistically, we're probably looking at a six and six league, uh, season. That's realistically. But my expectations is going to be eight and four. Um, I would love to see it go further. I would love to see double digits and that would be great. You know, that, that'd be really uh, awesome to see if uh, we could get double digit wins and looking at the schedule. I think I said this earlier um, in, in the uh, other part, uh, episode that it's possible. I think we could pull off at least a double digit win season, but to keep the, you know, to keep it, you know, my, my expectations tempered, I feel like we could do eight and four. Um, that is just pretty much easy. If I had the name, like the teams that may give us trouble and, you know, I said, I don't think everything will be a win and loss and I don't want to go through everyone, but I just think the four wins, the four losses will probably, I, I could say a Nebraska or UAB, maybe both. Uh, we'll probably end up losing to, um, I, I want to say Appalachian state and, uh, Louisiana. I could feel us losing those games. That's just me, you know, just pointing out that off the top. Now the games I would that I that I don't want I don't want us to lose Appalachia State. So I'll say that. But the games that I feel that we um I if we have to take Appalachia State out of that, I'll probably flip it and maybe say Marshall, maybe. 
I think at the end of the year, we'll win one of those two games. I'll just say that. But I think, you know, outside of that, um, maybe we could still win from Nebraska UAB or whatever the case may be. But that's just if we lose four games. Uh, I see us, or I would even say we'll, we'll win one of those games in Nebraska UAB and end up losing to Coastal Carolina. Because I already said on record, that's probably our most toughest. Uh, that's our toughest game out of all of this because we're on the road against a prominent foe that um, that, that know us very well. I mean, we could sneak one past Nebraska. I believe we can do that. Um, it's going to be a tough test, but I think we can't. I, I don't know any of the the personnel in Nebraska right now, so I don't know. And um, UAB, um, that's another one we could possibly sneak by on and get them as well. So as of right now, I think those are the four. Um, those could be the four losses, either Nebraska, UAB, the Coastal Carolina game, Marshall, Appalachian State. Out of those five games, those they'll be we could possibly lose four out of the four out of those five games. The rest of them, I see us winning. You know, I like I said, I don't want to get into the entire oh, we should win this game because of that, or we should win this game because of that. I just looking at it at eight and four. I think those are the four games that uh we could possibly lose. Um I, I love what this team is doing so far. And and, and I, I put these expectations high because I love what this team is doing so far. From the recruiting, the culture, what Coach Clay Helton has done, getting these guys prepared. I've seen some of the drills that they've been doing. They, I mean, they got these guys locked and loaded. They have these guys locked and loaded. And it's a good thing to see because this is the type of stuff, I'm going to be honest, I haven't seen this in the team like this in a while. You know, and, and it, it, to me, it just feel like it is a recipe for some wins. There's recipes to make these guys great football players. There are recipes to make guys great men. And this is what you want to see when you bring out, you know, a new coach with a new vision and um, quite frankly, a different vision because the, the vision of this team was being really blue collar isk or blue collar esque. And there's nothing wrong with that. You want guys that are blue collar. But then again, you want guys that are just straight up dogs. You want guys that that that's going to go after the ball and just you know be about that football life. You know that that doesn't that doesn't differentiate far from what is a blue collar uh, player. But at the same time, when you're looking at guys who are just look, all I'm all I all I'm trying to do is play some ball. All I want to do is play some ball, and I want to get to the quarterback, or I want to score some touchdowns. I want to beat the man in front of me. And I think that's what Coach Helton is trying to get. He's trying to get talent here that just want to beat the man in front of them. You know, the blue collar, the blue collar type of player is no different, not much different from what I just explained. But it just, I think the blue collar guy is more focused on inner self and trying to be the best person they can be. Which is, look, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But they take less of the the, the dog, the guy who just want to play some ball. They, they just want to beat the guy for just just have that competitive edge or just, you know, no matter what, they just want to, you know, smack some guys around on the offensive line. They want to get past that person to get to the quarterback. Or they want to beat that guy off the off the line and, and go over the top and get a touchdown on him. Those type of guys are different because they're not necessarily focused on themselves. They're just focused on getting better. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I just feel like they just want to be the best no matter what. They're not just necessarily and i'm not saying that this is a bad thing i know because i know a lot of people in eagle nation live by this you know blue collar tough you know um being a gs man mentality and and i still feel like that's still here but one thing i noticed that was lacking from uh georgia southern georgia southern was more focused on not beating themselves you know i mean this has been that way for a while now Especially when since we got in the Sun Belt, we saw a lot of as soon, as soon as we came to FBS, we saw a lot of that where a lot of guys would just learn to not to beat themselves. I think that just comes with the territory with with Coach Clay Helton philosophy is like, look, you're going to be the best you can be, and we want you to win some football games by beating the opponent, uh, the opponent. And I think that's the mentality that that is being set here. So when you talk about win loss records. If you have that type of mentality, I'm going to be honest, you could probably win every game that's on this list. You could probably win every game that's on this list. But realistically, my expectations, I feel honestly, eight and four is where we, where, where we should be. I demand eight and four. I don't want anything less than eight and four. Seven and five, six and six, no. And I know some guys in my Discord already said they want six and six. That's fine. 
but no, I want eight and four minimum. I, I honestly, uh, if I want to take it a step higher, I want to be at least a top 25 team when it's all said and done. I want to be where Coastal Carolina was. I want to be where Appalachian State was. I want to be where Louisiana was. You see what I'm saying? I don't see nothing. I don't see anything less. And I think that with Coach, with Coach Helton here, I, I want to tell you something. With, people can say what they want about Coach Helton. But based on what he's done throughout his entire career, we have one of, if not the best football coach in the Sun Belt right now. Almost damn near the most decorated. Almost. Almost. I'm not going to say he is, but almost. But we have at least top two coach in, in the Sun Belt. I mean, Appalachian State coach, you know, um, the the one that, lo- that was there before I think was Drinkwitz. He's gone. So the guy behind him is doing okay, but he's not as decorated or he's, I don't think he's more decorated than Coach Helton. The coach at Georgia State has done phenomenal, but I don't think he's up there with him. Coastal Carolina coach has done a phenomenal job with, in Conway, South Carolina, but I don't think he you know is more as, as, as accomplished. I mean, Coach Helton has a Pac, Pac-12 title. I think he won a Rose Bowl too, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I feel like we're in really good position to n- just not expect. This is one of the reasons why I expect at least eight wins because of the type of coach we have and the type of coaching staff he bought in. We don't bring this type of coaching staff in to have a six and six, seven and five season. We did that with the last regime and no disrespect to them. Shout out to coach. Once again, shout out to coach, uh, Jad Lunsford, tight ends coach down at FAU. Awesome. Coach Sloan is a f- defensive coach at Army now. Phenomenal. Good good job. But to, to be honest with you, I don't think Coach Elton or Coach Sloan was the problem with his team. We already kind of know how the offense ran, but, you know, no no, no knock on Doug Roos, Coach Doug Roos, you know, it, or Bob the Best. No, no, no knock on them, but it, it just wasn't working. You know, it's it's all good. I mean, you're not going to be successful everywhere. It is what it is. But when you bring this type of coaching staff in, I expect at least eight wins. You know, I mean, you got you you basically got a power five staff on a group of five a school. Why would you expect six and six? And it's not a knock on any of my guys in the Discord because you know it, it's cool. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I'm just asking, like. If, if if Coach Helton came in and he brought a lot of guys that were like really lower tier or other group of five coaches or coordinators in, I can understand that. But when you got a Will Harris, a Ryan Applin, uh, you got uh, Merritt as running back coach. Oh man, who's the offensive coordinator? I can't I can't even remember his name. It's not Applin. It's the other guy. Uh, man, it, it it just blew my mind. I'm sorry. Came from um WKU. But when you have those type of guys coming in the strength and conditioning coach, the linebackers coach. Those guys are prominent guys that came from Power 5 school. I think the only person that didn't come from Power 5 school was the special teams guy, and, and he did great at special teams at the FCS level. And, you know, I just saw uh, I just saw some type of article that Coach Helton, you know, he hired more people. I mean, what's going on with the budget at Georgia Southern? I mean, I mean, we got some analysts, some video coordinators. Um, uh, the, tr- the nutritionist was hired. I think that this she was hired long, not too long ago. But we got some recruiting um, staff that's back in. You think that we just went through 159 counties at Georgia? <laughs> Did you see some of the recruits that we're going for now? I mean, that could be another subject for another video, another um, podcast. But I mean. We're we're trying to pick up more four star recruits. I don't know if anybody noticed that. It's just a phenomenon. So when you have these type of people coming in that are destined to be successful, six and six may be realistic. It may be something that can happen with this schedule. But I expect eight and four. I smell. I I sense eight and four when Coach Helton walked through the door. And he had his first speech and his first announcement. And he had his first press conference. And looking at the schedule, I mean, I, I can see it. The threat, the games that are really a threat, Nebraska, UAB, Coastal Carolina, Marshall, Appalachian State, maybe Louisiana. But I'm looking at this and I'm looking at our talent. This is not going to be the same team from last year. It's not going to be that three and nine team that struggled to 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 run the option. 
We're going to be much more uh, aggressive. And with the quarterback we have, the receivers, the quarterbacks that we have, not just the quarterback, the receivers that we have, the defensive coordinator that we have, and I'm not even talking about the running backs. I mean, from J.D. King all the way to uh, Omar Caspi, even the four-star that we bought in. You mean to tell me with this talent? And, and, and we look at the offense and defensive linemen guys that we bought in. Beefing those guys up and they're in there lifting weights and pushing and pulling on the on, on in these drills. I'm not saying that they are going to win eight games, but I expect eight wins because of what I see. Last year was kind of iffy. We didn't know what the quarterback situation was going to look like. We thought Justin Tomlin was going to be this, that, and the third. Okay. Shaw Wirtz came back for his uh, final year, you know. I, I always felt that we could win a bowl game. At least we won the RL Carrier Bowl. You know, when you got Showers on the center, anything can happen. I mean, he, he's just that talented. I watched him start from as a freshman. In the first game, I watched him play at Georgia against Georgia State. We lost 17-10, to 10, and he tried his best to bring that team back. We just couldn't win it on fourth down. But ever since then, I knew he was going to be special. And ever since then, his entire career at Georgia Southern was, like, phenomenal. So from – you see what we had then and you see what we have now. You mean to tell me we can't do what we did the same or, or do better than we did when we won the RL Carrier Bowl? You did you tell you you mean to tell me we can't do this better than we did when we won the Cure Bowl? When we went to the Cure Bowl? We won 10 games. We went 10 and 3. I don't I don't want to sound crazy right now. We won 10 games and beat Eastern Michigan in the Camellia Bowl with a team that is just as talented, if not more talented, with the team that we have now is more talented, if not just as talented as it was before in, on, in that season. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the, right now the, the running backs that we have now are more talented. And it's not a knock on, you know, uh, you know, uh, Oh, good. What is his name? Oh, uh, Wesley. Damn. Number 21. I can't remember his name. It's not a knock on him. It's not a knock on any other running back that we had coming through. I'm just saying. The, the, the receivers, I'm not even going to talk about the receivers. We had better, we had better receivers last year with Derwin Burgess and, and, and Caleb Hood than what we had in the 10-win season. If you if you tell me that I'm lying, let me know. And I'm not even talking about the ones that just, that just came in, the one that transferred from Houston. I'm not talking about all the guys that we recruited. I'm just talking about the Caleb Hoods and the Duran Burgess and the J.J. McAfee's. I feel that they were more talented than what we had in the 10-win season. Tight ends, you might have got me. The Darion Anderson was nice. I love Darion Anderson. Darion, Darion Anderson was great. Defensively, yeah. You, know, you might you might got me on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, the, the, the defense of Georgia Southern was just great back then. But I'm just talking about offensively. But the defense of Georgia Southern was really good. I don't think I don't think we matched that defense yet from that from that season. But they were they're just as talented. They're just as talented. So I, I I feel like I'm not even going there and say they should win 10 games. I, I think they should win four. I mean, I'm sorry. I think they should lose four. I think they should win eight. I, I'm just saying, I mean, that's my expectation. I, I'm just looking at this team and the makeup of it. You got a lot of veterans coming back. The Dylan Springers, the J.D. Kings, you know, um, Trent, uh, not, yeah, Trent Watson is coming back. Bradley Glenn is coming back. Derek Canteen is coming back. I don't even know what our safeties look like right now, but liking Ashton Whitner, liking him, liking him a lot, liking him a lot. <laughs> I can't talk. You got Mark Stampley that's going to make try to make a name for himself. Chalon is still around. I forgot. I feel like Chalon is still around. He he was a freshman last year. You know, you still got uh. Oh man, what's his name? Um, the other cornerback that played Tyler Bride. Uh, yeah, is it Tyler Bride? He's gonna be back. 
We just talked about Quincy Barner moving to defensive back. That front seven, Kirsten Varner is going to take uh, the place of C.J. Wright. Eldrick Robinson is returning. What a freshman season he had. And we just got a lot of linebackers coming in. Got a lot of, and I, and I hope, and I'm going to say this again, I hope Sean Pell Kissing is moving to the defensive side of the ball. Somebody let me know if, if this is happening. Please. Somebody let me know. I don't know, man, but I'm just saying, I just feel that what we have could garner us eight wins. I'm, I didn't want to compare it to the 2018, 2000, yeah, 2018 season, but I'm looking at it like the coaching staff, the players, you know, like we go back again. I love shot words, but we got a pure passer in a different system now. We got some receivers to throw to. He's going to want to. Coach Helton wants to throw the ball downfield. And with having Derwin Burgess alone, it's going to make a difference. Because Derwin Burgess was unused talent. Oh, and Amari Jones. I didn't even talk about Amari Jones. I don't I don't have anything else to say. Let me know what you guys think. I'm past the 20-minute mark. I don't want to hold you guys up. I try to keep it between 20 and 25 minutes. And I, I, I didn't even talk about Amari Jones. I mean, that is crazy. We have a lot of talent. Let me know what you guys think. Am I tripping? Eight and four? What What do you think? I don't think I'm tripping. I think we could do it. If you like this content, hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. I'm on Rumble YouTube. If you want to listen, you can listen on Anch- if you listen to Podcast Avenue. You listen on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google. Go ahead and give me a five-star rating on that star chart. Let me know what you guys think. Give me some feedback. Let me know, am I tripping in the comment section? Let me know if I'm tripping in the feedback section on, uh, on, uh, on Apple. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want to donate, all the links are down in the description. Check me out if you really love the content. Any Every little bit helps. I really appreciate it. Also, spread the word. Like I said, share this. Let Eagle Nation know what we're doing over here. I really appreciate y'all. Thank you guys for another successful episode. We are two away from 300. 299 will be up tomorrow. And uh, 300 should be up. What's that? Monday. Monday will be a 300 episode. I may do something special. All right, y'all. I will catch you guys on the next one. You guys be take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.